Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So it's Friday. On Fridays we do florals. <laughs> Not all the time, but most of the time. And I thought we'd do a conversation and talk about painting a sophisticated autumn floral here. Um, I have these references that I did from my sketchbook from a year ago that I love, these botanicals. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you kind of like in little simple terms how I create something like this by using compound strokes with with the brush that I'm using my Princeton 8 long round and just just the techniques that I use how the consistency of the watercolor is for this kind of um, tutorial as well if you're a patreon member you get the extended version um, so there's a little more sophisticated florals around you're not going to get all the florals in here if you're not a patreon member but I will show you how you can do this um, if you want to know about patreon there's a link in my description box I have extended tutorials, I have exclusive tutorials, I have a live stream in the top tier, Facebook group where you can share your stuff, um, I give weekly challenges, monthly giveaways in the Facebook group, and Patreon members get first dibs and watercolor workshops and retreats. So it's a little bonus. Uh, and uh, it's a place people go and support my channel, which I really, really appreciate. So, but don't fret. All you people out there who want to learn how to do these compound strokes and make some sophisticated flowers you're gonna see all this too. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go over a few supplies. Um, of course, I have my palette here with all my paint and I talk about them as I go and use them. And all the paints that I use are in the description box. Pretty much my palette is this. <laughs> it's cadmium red and light, cadmium yellow deep. This is Prussian blue, ultramarine blue. This is Pants Gray. This is Burnt Umber. I put a little sometimes over here, Burnt Sienna, because um, I don't have enough little spaces to stick it. Um, peacock Blue, and sometimes this Cobalt over here, and there's kind of like a mess over here. You put the gouache sometimes there. And out in the outskirts could be uh, Bright Rose if it's summertime, or Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna, which is nice color, by the way, for fall. Maybe we'll put some of that out here. Um, great color. So yes, those are all there. What I use, I put in the description box. I generally have, I'm just making some right now, paper towels close by or a towel close by, etc., etc. By the way, I've been asked all the time. This is a ceramic palette from Sylvan Clayworks based out of Tennessee. They do, um, every now and then they upload some and they go out real fast. So it's very difficult to get them. When they have a new stock, they're gone. So if you ever have to watch for the stock and you can find them. Uh, they're really pretty awesome, but they're not cheap. Um, we'll be using a Princeton 8 long round for some of this little tutorial today. I have my Arsh pad here. This is that skinny little, they call it a sketchbook, but I don't think so. I just feel like it's just paper cut up small. <laughs> um, yeah, what size is this exactly? This is this pad. This is a 6x10 uh, spiral bound pad. So when you're painting like more serious kind of looking foliage and leaves you really have to practice strokes and i know people don't want to use nice paper but it's always good if you messed up a painting like here i just did this painting is a, I have a painting on here that i didn't really like so i just flipped it over you can practice on the back of something that you don't like and so this is a sketchbook that i have from strathmore a while ago that gifted me forever ago and absolutely cannot find this in stock and i took one that was a on eBay a long time ago. I thought this was a great sketchbook. They should have continued it, but um, it was really thick paper and the texture on it was really great. It was 100% cotton. And these are this beautiful, really nice, intense, intricate kind of botanicals that I painted in here. Look at that. I think I have showed a couple of tutorials way back on some of these like that I did. This is just greenery I did on these. And this one I have, these were more spring. So I went from like autumn to spring, as you see here, summer, summer summer again wildflowers back into autumn to finish it up right and it's really simple design and really simple strokes can really create all this nice little you know really you know it looks very sophisticated so let me show you what compound stroke is if you don't know what compound stroke is this is the basics of all brush strokes when you're painting with watercolor let's just mix up some green for the leaves this is Prussian blue and I'll grab some cabin yellow deep. And since it's fall, I'll put a little brown in there. So I'll put some of this burnt sienna. It's got a lot of red in it, so it's going to tone down that green, make it more of an olive green. 
You should play with all your colors and then write down what you put down so you know. So obviously green, red, excuse me, yellow and blue make green. And every blue is different. It will have different tones in it. So the ultramarine blue with the yellow is going to come out like more of a, uh, like a muddier, not muddy, but sagey kind of green. Uh, the Prussian blue and the peacock blue make it really bright. And the consistency here, we talk about this a lot. I have many videos on the consistency. Uh, this is more like coffee close to tea. Tea is like when you have almost like water. And you need a fair amount of it for for um, cotton paper because it soaks up the paint. So we have the brush. You hold it like this, like almost like you're writing a novel. <laughs> and it's just this, this push down and pull up method. See, I'm kind of like right in the wave. Push down and pull back. And you can, you can extend it. Push down and pull back. Extend it. That's a compound stroke. Where it gets a little fancy is say, hey, you have like the compound stroke, right? Now you want to kind of play with it, bend it backwards and down. Just, or you can go up with the tippy top just like a line and push it back down and back out. You got to start playing with your brush. And you may say this is boring and you don't like it and it's juvenile, but this is how you're going to grow as, you know, if you want to be technical about it, a better artist. And those are the strokes for those beautiful, wonderful leaves. Get a little more technical by adding in variations of color tone. So I'm adding more Prussian blue, a little more brown in here, getting a deeper green. While it's still damp, you can kind of bleed some on the ends. You know, now you have to start thinking about values. So it's strokes, it's values, it's water consistency. See the consistency here changed because of how much water and how much paint we had. It wasn't kind of all consistent on the brush. If it was, it'd be a little more flat like this. So here we go again. Kind of get all the paint in there on the brush. Push down and pull back. But it's puddling in that middle. You see that? And it's going to create those blooms if you push down and leave a lot of paint there. So you get a little cauliflower bloom happening because you left a lot of paint there. You try not to do that by kind of gliding it without pushing down too hard. And going back up. A little thicker paint helps and now it's more like a flat wash kind of consistency. I don't particularly mind this. I think it's actually very interesting. We don't want boring blooms and leaves. We want something exciting. So this push down, pull back method is true for all the brushes, no matter what brush it is. If it's the number eight long round, it's the Neptune series. Obviously it's a bigger brush and it's much more floppy. And we're going to be doing the same thing. Only it's bigger, it's going to hit more surface area. You're going to mix up more water in here. Sorry, it's like a bigger brush, more surface area. And then you're going to go like this. Once you get that mixed up. So many videos I show the same thing. It's a bigger brush. Look at that. It's a lot of water. What do you do? You don't put a lot of water on. You tap it off on your paper towel if you don't want that much water. And you do the same thing. Okay. So once you get those strokes down, that's great. And you got to work on the strokes for the flowers. I've talked about this many times in some of my videos. It's a swooping around method. I actually showed you that. Um, let me just remove some of this paint. So let's start off by just drawing in like a little sketch of where um, we would put some flowers. And I'm just going to kind of, you always kind of want interesting. You don't want a straight up and down flower on this and that, like V. You want to kind of bend and curve them, twist them, bend and curve and twist them. And maybe put a leaf in here. Something like that. A little smaller flower. You have to think about that. Where are they going to go? So I just put some lines. Bend, curve, curve. Simple little daisy maybe. Or chrysanthemum. And more like leaves. Just a line to indicate where they're going to go. And then we can do compound strokes to create all this fun stuff. So again, mix up some color, fall colors. You can make them plum, you can make them orange, um, you know, all those kind of rustic kind of colors. We have cadmium red light, like I said, 
here. Got some yellow. I've got green in there, so it's making it a little muddy. Why would the color be muddy? Because the green and the red are complementary colors and they turn brown. So we don't mind having a little brown here. So I'm going to go back and get that bright yellow in here, the bright, bright red. Again, the consistency now is a little milk to cream going towards tea now. Okay. So now that you have the color, we'll zoom in. Different kind of compound stroke for a flower. If it's a chrysanthemum and if it's extra water on your brush, tap it on paper towel. Again, boop, pushing down that kind of a compound stroke, but it's going like in this curvature kind of situation. We do some little ones and there's a lot of water on there. You can use that water, soak it back up like a mop and keep using that for the paint. That would be your first. Do a little bend here. So they're like little, like little U's and little bend. And that would be your first wash. And then for the second wash, we would go in and put in another little darker color. So we would wait till that dries and put some layering on there. So the compound stroke, again, we can do here again. I told you the different greens, right? So here's ultramarine blue and yellow. It's going to make a different green. See that green? Like I said, it's like a sagey kind of green. More in the fall. So here we go with that line. You see me go like this, pulling it, curving it. Boom. And now the fun part, just like I showed you. Push down, pull back up. If it kind of misses the stroke, you can kind of go back in if you want or don't. Play around with it. So you get a little dry brush here because it need to have more paint on the brush. Again, pull it back in because this paper just really soaks it all up. This is just the basic strokes for beginners. What makes it more interesting, see I just did the simple basic strokes in here. I'm going to fill this in that were lost from the, you know, it's dry brush because there's not enough paint. You just fill that in. You wait till all that dries and do another stroke on top of it, like I showed you the Gozak out. You want to make your variations in color for these different stems. So I'm going to add some browns, yellows, blue. Make my stem on this flower a completely different color. Green, it's a little darker. If you hear that clanking, it's my brush. It's hard to show you everything on the screen. My brush going back into the, the water. And you want the stem to follow through go down. So you're building a whole entire little bouquet here. Let's make a little um, leaf. Get some browns, burnt umber. Again, we need to mix up a lot of paint. Get some water and I have a little paints gray to make it darker. Or we could tap in a little paints gray. We can use some burnt sienna. We can use some orange. So I did a little leaf here. I can just fill in the whole leaf. You can see here and we can tap in the color because it's very damp. It's very wet. This is a wet on wet. Where you, this is where the paper, like this type of paper really comes into play. See how damp that is? You want to get this little spiky on the end. That's why this brush is great. It's got a great tip. It has a fairly decent long belly so you can kind of do those long strokes. And now that you have their leaf in there, take some dark color. Like I've mixed a um, burnt umber and paints gray, and it's a little thick here. When it's thicker, it won't bleed as much. So it kind of just stops. And you get more water on it, make it really thin, like tea consistency or coffee. While this is damp, it will bleed more. See how that just bled a lot more? And you kind of just want to tap it on the edges of your your leaf that we just painted. It's a little dry here, so it's not moving. And if that happens, you grab some water on your brush. I'm just going to push it. So I'm going to add some more reddish tones. I've got some of that cadmium red light. See, you can play around with putting in different color tones, even in that brown. Very, very fun. You can do this with every shape of leaf. Get that color in first and set bleeding in some other color. It's very interesting that way. 
how it gets more sophisticated again. Remember this chrysanthemum we were doing? Gonna go back in with that orange, maybe make it a little bit darker. Do another layer of color. Same kind of strokes. Go back over it and then put that darker color on the top again. Kind of going in between those little ones. And I have this dark color. Now I wouldn't just do orange, orange, orange. You can get more variations of color tone using the complementary color. Maybe when this dries, I'll show you, we'll get bluer with some ultramarine blue. Going back in here, because it was wet before, to follow through on that stroke of that stem. And then, of course, we have this stem here we talked about earlier. Remember this one? Now I'm gonna do this little technique. It's gonna go up and over, up and over, and then like that. See, that's you don't want this just plain old stems kind of going out, out, out. There's the sophistication happening, right? And then you grab some deeper, darker color and you can kind of tap that in underneath certain areas over here on the branch where it kind of meets the leaf. And you can, these ones right here, you can add like a little vein right in the center. And already it's building to be a really sophisticated looking, oh, I got my fingers on this lovely little leaf made a little mess if that ever happens to you grab water right away kind of wiggle that paint don't destroy your pitcher and get a paper towel and tap it and it can kind of remove it worst case scenario when it's completely dry you can take a um, exacto knife blade tiny little blade and you can kind of just scrape the first layer of the paper but you have to wait till your pitch is completely dry because you just, you can't paint on top of that and destroy it. So that's kind of what you do. I might have to just fix this all together by just going in here and putting in a leaf and you'll never know, <laughs> right? Did anybody see that? Nope. Nobody saw that. Fixed right there. Ta-da. So that's the basis of that. Like I said, when the um, orange one is dr dry, you go and grab some like ultramarine blue, like I said, and it's gonna change the color of this. It's gonna give it a nice little shadow. I'm just still very wet, so I'm tapping it on that side. The blue is a complementary color to orange, so the shadow is gonna be nice and natural looking. Just like that. Green up the yellow. And so we can make some nice simple daisies at the end. I'll just put like a half moon, see? Pretty thick paint there. Clean up my brush, grab some water on there. It kind of wiggles, see I'm wiggling and blending it and leaving that white section. Why do I leave the white section? So it looks like a little highlight. And while it's still damp, with the tip of your brush, you can tap in a little brown, just in the bottom, and I'll go on one side. And that, see how that looks three dimensional now? That's how you do it. So I just have the little bud part. If you want to put some nice daisies, you draw those in. And then again, it can be ultramarine blue, a little gray, whatever you want to do. I do the little lines and you can kind of start just put the little gray on the side. Why don't we get a little more blue, bluish gray. Right, I just did that one line. I'll clean off my brush. I'll grab a little bit of water so it's damp and I'll kind of blend it. Kind of going into the leaf petal. And then it's bringing out that white flower with the color. I might grab a little brown. I go back in and grab some more blue. And it gets a little deeper towards the center here. I grabbed a little blue, maybe a little too much blue, but I can always fix that. Grab a little burnt sienna and I'll make a nice gray. Uh, white flowers are never just white. They're kind of cast shadows. And then you can kind of just touch the bottom with the gray color. 
just sophisticated, just like that. See a little round on the bottom? And get it a little darker. Wait till that dries and get even more darker, right? And then of course the stem. I'm gonna make my green stem a little bit browner by adding some brown to that green. It could be even brown itself. Again, follow through. Follow through. And then you have really sophisticated looking blooms. And again, add the veins. Oops, I'm sorry. So again, you follow through. <laughs> I had the greens, I'm sorry. So I add this green color and you follow through. Sometimes I forget to pull back. I add a little vein in here. We have that chrysanthemum. Again, we're gonna get a little bit deeper with our color. A little deeper orange, a little thicker paint. Kind of like on this one left side and in the middle but on top. I'm just tapping that in. See how you get that? I'm just gonna fill in some beans. We just tap in, if this is dry, the little veins for the leaves. Etc. There you go. And like I said, for the top one, we get to the strides, and we're going to go in and add a little bit deeper gray just under the lovely daisy. Highlight the bottom by curving it, and then the little petals. They can get a little bit deeper. Maybe mine went a little too dark, but but you get the idea. And adding a little bit darker shadow. to really enhance it. And you can even get a little bit deeper on this side too. It's looking a little orangey. If you want to add more yellow, go ahead and do that. Really simple. And again, on these leaves, get a little darker on the bottom and a little bit on the top. Look a little more sophisticated. And that's that. So for the extended version, uh, if you're a Patreon, you have the extended version, but here we're gonna stop. Um, and so they're giving you the basics for how to create sophisticated blooms. And these, these practices will help you really get into the slow movement of sophistication without having to be so overly realistic. So you see the sophistication in the blooms without having to you know, be so tedious with every single um, leaf and petal. It's a lot faster this way. Here I might go back and add a little bit more brighter orange on the chrysanthemum. A little more bright now the color has dried. Can wisp out some other ones way out here. Make it more interesting. And add a little more of that ultramarine blue for shadow on the left side. So thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you learned something about compound strokes and how to create these sophisticated botanicals without working too hard. <laughs> and like I said, if you're Patreon, you get the extended version. So thank you so much and take care.